Hi, everyone. Thanks for dropping in and lovely to have folks here in the Zoom room. And we're happy to share practice with you whenever you're joining us on the YouTube recording. Uh, my name is Jill Davey, and I'm one of the Dharma teachers with True North Insight. My pronouns are they and them, and I'm residing on stewarding Six Nation territory lands colonially named Fergus, Ontario, and um, yeah, that's enough about me for now. <laughs> what, welcome to you all. So today I, uh, among other things, was uh, attending, participating, supporting as a volunteer, uh, a hospice spousal loss grief group more accurate to say, a spousal loss grief group offered by hospice. And I'm one of the volunteers that was has been supporting this group for a number of weeks. Today, we're about week four or five and of this series, and we were talking about and exploring emotions that are part of this grieving process. It's just emotions that are part of life. And all of us are grieving. The, you know, these folks have had a recent and intimate partner loss. Um, but all, all of us are experiencing grief to different degrees at different times. And also global grief, <laughs> certainly environmental grief, certainly, ancestral grief, certainly, and many other forms of grief, of loss, of um, losses of identity and beings that we love and um, just all the grief and loss that comes with the change, which is an inescapable part of life. <clears throat> and so in the group today, it, uh, one of the things that was mentioned uh, was a, a, a reference to this ancient Japanese art of uh, that's called Kintsugi, K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I, -I, Kintsugi. And it's uh, from the 15th 15th century uh, in Japan, I already mentioned Japan, uh, late 15th century. There's different stories about how it arose, but uh, um, it's a way of repairing, no, of rejoining, not repairing, <laughs> rejoining things that are broken. And I'll do a quick screen share because some of us, I'm a visual person. Uh, and so you can see this um, image of an example of Kintsugi. So hopefully that's big enough that you could see this image. This is a little ceramic or pottery bowl that's been broken. And then when it's repaired, it's intentionally repaired with gold um i'll say more about the process in a moment but so that the the lines and the breaks are actually highlighted and made stronger because of their breaks so i'll say more about that hopefully you can see that image okay and um so kin k-i-n part of kintsugi means golden and sugi means rejoining. And also the literal translation of that is um, next. So like what's next? And the, the, this ancient art is actually a very slow and meditative process, a meditative art. And it can take up to three months to do it in the traditional way. 
because they don't just like use super glue like we would. <laughs> they, they use um, lacquer, you know, taken from a tree. And then it, so it takes longer time to dry and cure. And and then I'll say more about the rest of the process. But it's the modern methods are faster, but still slow, still meditative. It's a a healing meditative art and most of our most of our hurts our damage our wounds our grief also happen without our choosing like when we drop a beautiful bowl ah you know or a favorite mug we don't usually throw our own things to break, especially if it's something that's that's cherished or mm, valued. Um, and similarly, our own wounds, breaks, harms, um, we do, we're we're usually not choosing them. These are things that happen because of life or happen because of harm caused by others and so this art this image can become a metaphor for a way to rejoin our broken pieces um, bringing them together in a way where they actually become stronger and beautiful, more beautiful or beautiful in the broken places. So this, this art is not done in a way that tries to hide the break. You know, maybe if you've ever broken like a some ceramic or pottery and it's, you know, got a kind of a nice clean break and you get the crazy glue and, you know, you can really mend it together so that, you know, you almost don't see it. You'd really have to look to see the crack. Um, this is the opposite of this. It's repaired or mended in a way that that doesn't hide how things are. Um, instead, it it uh, highlights rather than hiding how things are. And so if we look at this a bit more as a metaphor for life, <laughs> the the glue that's um well it would it traditionally was lacquer um that is used represents connection, rejoining the our fragmented parts coming together in a way that is connection, not perfection. So this could be mm, a calling for us to make connection to our exiled parts, to our shadow parts, to our wounded or broken parts, not to uh, mm, make something perfect again, but a, a type of healing that's about connecting, not perfecting. And so after that slow, mm, yeah, after that slow process of rejoining, then there, then there's sanding that happens, very, very gentle and soft sanding of any excess glue and this could represent smoothing and releasing what is no longer needed you know that mm, what can be done has been done and what is no what else is not needed that could be let go of And that that's also a necessary part of this rejoining or healing or reconnecting. 
And then, so after the gluing, the sanding, then the gold is applied in modern methods, you know, I just mix gold into into the glue or something, it, you know, they can do different ways, but it would have been uh, applied after <clears throat> in really beautiful ways. And again, it's not about covering anything up, but about highlighting or mapping our journey. So, and it, this is very much, it seems to me, like meditation. That in meditation, we gently, with care and attention, slowly bring light to the exiled, dark, hidden, unconscious parts of our habits and our psyche and our shadow parts that act out. And part of mindfulness practice is gently bringing light into the unconscious parts that are pushing us into reactivity rather than responding or respondability, responsibility, respondability. And like, like this art form and meditation, this mending requires work, it requires effort and, and skillful intention and attention. It's, it's not something that's just going to happen. We need to actually put in some effort and some care, some time, patience, lots of self-compassion, stillness, study. Yeah, it requires intention and effort. And so I was reflecting on and curious about what, you know, to ask ourselves, what is our golden glue? <laughs> what is your golden glue? What is it? that helps you to meet and care with even I don't even like to call it broken parts but um maybe that maybe it's okay to say that or exiled parts or shadow parts or wounded parts that's better than broken wounded wounded parts um certainly mindfulness <laughs> Mindfulness. Mindfulness it comes from the root sati in in Pali language, which mm, part of the translation of sati means remembering, beginning again, remembering, beginning again. So mindful attention to what's needed, mindful attention to what's here. Another thing that might resonate for you, for us, as our golden glue, is community, sangha. So here we are joining with intention to practice and cultivate wisdom and care with other like-hearted, like-minded beings. And this helps us feel like some hope. <laughs> There's other people endeavoring to mm, grow in this way and there, this is just one of many forms of community you know so where who's who's your golden glue people <laughs> who's your community that helps you be authentic and be kind and be in the work of repair repair repairing our relationships with each other with the earth and with ourselves. Uh, part and parcel of mindfulness is wisdom. So wisdom is another golden glue. Part of this practice 
is shamatha vipassana. So shamatha means calm, calm, uh, clarity, stability. And vipassana means insight, seeing clearly, vipassana, seeing in a particular way, seeing into the true nature of things. And this cultivates wisdom. Other things that arose for me uh, as golden glue is nature. <laughs> How healing it is to have our feet on the earth, grounding our hands in the dirt, our eyes to the sky, mm. all of the elements so healing and therapy <laughs> i certainly don't believe that mindfulness and meditation is like the all the everything for everyone i'm all for lots of different avenues of of healing and art art itself so you know this Sometimes people now are kind of doing it intentionally. Like, so if something breaks, <laughs> I was watching a um, a traditional Japanese artist teaching about this, and and she was so excited when something broke. She's like, yeah. <laughs> "Yay! Now I can practice kintsugi and kintsugi." I think I just yeah kintsugi um you know so she has a special box that she puts it in until she's ready to do this whole process as this meditation um it's so different you know when we have something that we may have some attachment to and it's like ah you know i've seen some people like really like get super upset when something breaks and so interesting to just be able to turn that like oh here's an opportunity to practice this healing art um some people now are kind of doing it on purpose and uh you know there's a whole process of wrapping it in a cloth and making meaning out of that you know what holds us in these times of being shattered and then they use a hammer which represents <laughs> life <laughs> the great hammer <laughs> of aging sickness death loss not being able to keep what we want losing um what we want to keep etc and and so then they wrap it in the cloth and they actually intentionally break something and then go about this meditative process of mending this can be a very helpful activity for those in grief um, to to break something and then repair it in this way and it really represents this process of of healing um mm, yeah so that can be an intentional art practice um but any kind of art all of the arts Mm. singing and moving and creating these are also ways um, that may feel like golden glue for us so to get curious about what what's your glue what's your golden glue what's what is it that helps you be whole and um, mm, accepting and this intention of coming together again in a way that's actually stronger than the original and I would say more beautiful than the original. It's really hard when we're in the thick of particularly grief to feel like there's anything beautiful in it or that we're going to be stronger for it because we can just feel so destroyed. Um, and that's where... Uh, Faith can come in. 
faith in the Dharma is not blind faith, it's called sada, and it's more akin to trust, to recalling, to uh, really knowing deeply that everything is impermanent, and recalling and knowing deeply our ability, our resilience, our ability to move through, mm. and also trust, faith in when we don't feel it within ourselves, and whose word can you take for it? <laughs> Who, What wise ones in your life do you trust? You know, it could be other people that have gone through something similar that are telling you um, this is possible. Yeah. So tonight we're going to do a practice. It's kind of riffing off these themes, but it's akin to self-compassion. This is one of the Brahma Vihara practices, the divine abodes of the awake heart, the aware heart, called chitta. And it's a cultivation. It's a karuna bhavana. So karuna means compassion and bhavana means cultivation. That we might not feel very compassionate or even caring when we're doing this practice, and that's okay. But we touch into the seed the seed of this deep wish we have for well-being, for uh, rejoining, for strength, for beauty. We touch into and we, through the practice, as we repeat these phrases, we invite that to grow and invite that to mm, really flourish in our lives, in our hearts and minds. <clears throat> I think that's enough. Um, yeah, so I'll just mention, um, let me see, where is it? Yes, there. <laughs> I love that. It's a beautiful wall of Dharma books here. <laughs> right there, ah, so good. This, this, I mentioned Faith, so I'll just mention this book, Faith by Sharon Salzberg. It's uh, Trusting Your Own Deepest Experiences, the subtitle. She's, a, of course, a fabulous Dharma teacher and author. And uh, this is a great exploration. If you're not sure what faith means in your life, maybe this might be something helpful for you in here. It's just called Faith, Sharon Salzberg, S-A-L-Z-B-E-R-G. Just realized how Canadian that sounds, Z. Um, okay. Mm. Yes, that's enough. Let's us, let's us practice. Let us practice the art of self-compassion. So adjusting anything in your space, you might, uh, so this is a heart abode practice. It's really helpful to be kind and comfortable with your body. So you could practice this laying down. You might want to dim your lights, uh, see if you need any other supports or comfort for your body. <clears throat> And just take your time arriving into your posture. See if you need any stretch or movement or touch. If it feels helpful to look around your space and um, hopefully feeling a sense of safety where you are that you can touch into this cultivation practice. Mm. 
See if you need any sighing breaths, any releasing. And when you feel ready, see what posture for the eyes is supportive for you. If it's uh, helpful to close the eyes, to turn your attention inward, or just resting the eyes downward, or even just resting the eyes on an, an object of beauty or calm or peace that may be in your space. And then invite in this felt experience of sighing, mentally sighing, physically, energetically. Inviting a letting go or a releasing of any tension that isn't needed right now. Softening into your seat or your posture, whatever it is. And just taking our time with this, noticing the getting familiar with. the places of habit tension that may reside with you. Is it in the forehead, the jaw, hands, shoulders, the inner layers of the belly, Gently opening to a curiosity of looking for any holding or tension or contraction. And if it's not needed right now, let it soften or slip away. And then we'll just open to the felt experience of resting in the posture that you're in. Just feeling like a sphere of awareness around the whole body. That's simply here now. Feeling the contact of the ground. Touch of air. Sounds coming and going. Sensations, perhaps sensations of breath or other sensations coming and going. Just a few more moments together, just landing here. Now, here, now. And then gently allowing the attention to radiate from open to the area of the heart center, center of the chest. 
the seat of aware kindness. Just a general felt experience in this area of the body can be spacious or more gathered in, however it feels best for you. And just not needing to go into a, a story or in depth, but just touching into the truth that there have been harm, harms, wounds, aches, in this life experience. There can be a gentle knowing that there are some shadow places or some exiled parts of ourselves. And then gently repeating these phrases silently to yourself and touching into that seed, this cultivation of this self-care. Gently touching it with the light of awareness. May I be patient with this healing journey. May I be patient with this healing journey. It's like this slow meditative art that takes time. We give ourselves that space and time and care to be patient with our healing. So you could just silently repeat that or use your own words or just touch into the felt experience. May I be patient with this healing journey. May I be patient with this healing art, this healing journey. May I feel strength in these hurt places. May I feel strength in these hurt places. Feeling the sensation of inner strength where this rejoining, rebonding, reconnecting has happened for you. May I feel strength in these hurt places.
And like the very gentle sanding of the excess glue after the rejoining, may I release what is no longer needed. May I release what is no longer needed. In repeating these words, using your own words, or just resting with the felt experience, the cultivation of this deep wish. May I release what is no longer needed. not needing to go into any stories about who or what might not be needed any longer, but just staying with the intention, the aspiration, the cultivation of release, what is no longer needed. And if you feel pulled into a head space or a thinking space or have even abandoned present moment and embodiment, just take a few moments to reconnect to the sensation of the ground, sensation in the heart center, embodied presence. May I bring the light of awareness to the shadows. May I bring the golden light of awareness to the shadow parts. May I bring the golden light of awareness to the shadows, with the shadows. May I know the beauty of rejoining what is fragmented. May I know the beauty of rejoining what is fragmented. Just silently repeating that or your own words or just touching into the felt experience of your inner beauty, your outer beauty, the beauty of resilience.
May I be patient with this healing journey. May I feel strength in these hurt places. May I release what is no longer needed. May I bring the light of awareness to the shadows. May I know the beauty of rejoining what is fragmented. You might even feel a felt experience or the gentle image of these golden lines within the body, within the heart, within the mind. Bringing light and beauty and strength to our wounded parts. And in these last few minutes of the practice, perhaps reflecting on and seeing if anything needs to be cultivated a little more around what is your golden glue? Are you resourcing yourself with community, with art, with nature, with meditation? self-care, and see if you can just take some time to refill your pot. What is your goal?
And then releasing that part of the practice and reconnecting with the sensations of the ground, sounds, sensations, touch, here now, here now. I'm taking three more breaths here. And following this sound till the end of the third bell. you for your practice and your presence and I was reminded during the practice of uh, another sculpture I had seen um, that if you haven't seen it yet I'd love to pull it up for you so just hang in for one second the artist is named Paige Bradley sculpture uh, images. Oh, I hope I can find. Oh, there. Oh, golly, golly, gorgeous. Okay. Uh, visit. This is one of several kind of like this theme. So I'll just screen share. Um, there. Share. Um, is it big enough that you can see? See the figure with the. Um, yeah, Katsugi cracks and kin kintsugi pardon me um th this artist has done s several others like this and there's other artists that have as well but there's another one i was thinking of where they're kind of leaning forward yeah they're really beautiful but it kind of felt that image um as we're meditating just feeling my own cracks and and intentions of rejoining and kind of like these gold golden lines in 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 here <laughs> so yeah I hope there's uh, something freeing for your heart in um, meeting our wounds with this different uh, different way <laughs> the words are gone now <laughs> as we can see <laughs> so thanks for joining us and uh, hope to share practice with you again